Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Thank you. Jane and this is my channel where I share content about how to study abroad, my lifestyle as a graduate student in the US and every other thing. So I wanted to quickly make this video to answer some of the questions that people have been asking me and I feel like this video is very timely because this is the time when schools will soon start opening their portal for applying for admissions to study in the US and a lot of people some of you are already like preparing your packages to apply but there are some wrong mindsets some wrong information that you guys have that is kind of stopping some people from applying to schools they are supposed to apply to or some people is actually like reducing their self-confidence because of the wrong information they have so i'm really hoping that this video the point i'm going to be sharing this video will answer some of those questions hope you have the right information also boost your confidence to apply to schools in the u.s in this application season so the first question i'm going to be asking is about people that want to do a master's or a phd in the u.s a lot of people have the wrong mindset that for you to be able to get scholarship to study in the u.s for your master's or your phd that you must have a first class in your undergraduate degree that is a very very big lie whoever told you that does not like you so you don't need to have a first class degree for you to be able to get a scholarship in the US. I know people who do not have first class and they have scholarship. So for you to be able to have funding, all you need to do is to meet their eligibility criteria, one of which is the GPA cutoff. So schools will usually tell you their cutoff for their GPA. There will, some will tell you 3.0, some will say 3.1, 3.2, 2. whatever. So you just need to make sure that whatever school you're applying to, that you meet the cutoff, their GPA cutoff. And even if you don't meet their GPA cutoff, you can still apply. I know that one sounds strange. Even if you don't meet their um, cutoff, you can still apply. Just make sure. The other parts of the application packages are really good so that when they are looking through your application package, they will realize that, okay, this person has this, this person is this, person is that, but their GPA is not as high as we want. It, let's admit this person. And also, when you're writing your essays for admission, try to talk about the reason why you had a low GPA. Try to make them understand. Please, the first thing is you don't need to have a first class for you to be able to get scholarship to study for master's or PhD in the US. Another very important information that people lack about studying in the US. This one is also for people that want to take PhD. You know how in the UK or in Nigeria, in Ghana, different most countries, for you to do a PhD, you must have done a master's. So you need to have a show that you have a master's before they are admitted for a PhD. But that is not the case in the US. The US, you don't need to have a master's to do a PhD. But please, if you have finished your undergraduate degree and you know that the end goal, the thing you want, really want to do is to do a PhD, don't go and be applying for a master's. And so, when I finish my master's, I'll apply for a PhD. What, what it does is that it increases the number of years you're going to spend to get your PhD because here in the US, whether you have a master's or you don't have a master's, everybody will do the same number of years for PhD, which is five, six, or four years. So what's the point of doing a master's first, have master's for two years, then you now come and spend on that five or four or six years doing your PhD, where you can just apply direct. So the US allows you to apply for a PhD with only an undergraduate degree. The good thing is that while you're doing your PhD, you also get your master's. Like for me, I didn't have a master's when I applied, I only did undergraduate. And when I started my PhD, after my second year, I wrote my proposal exam and they gave me a master's certificate. So right now I have a master's degree certificate. So please apply directly. You don't need a master's to apply for a PhD in the US. The next wrong mindset that people have is that to be able to get scholarship or even admission to study in the US, a PhD in the US, that you need to have a publication in your undergraduate degree or your master's degree a big lie you do not need to have a publication before you'll be able to get scholarship and admission into the to study in the u.s although it, but it is good for you to really have a publication but it is not a criteria the only thing that having a publication does is that it's just like it, it just like gives you an edge over others it's more like okay okay i already have something i already know something so it doesn't mean that if you don't have a publication they will not give you admission and funding they will give you admission and funding so please go ahead and apply for that PhD even if you don't have a publication. Please, I beg you, I know a lot of people that don't have publications and they're here in the US doing their PhD.
the next um, wrong information that people have is that for you to be able to get admission and especially get scholarship to study your master's or your PhD here in the US, that you need to already have a supervisor in the US before you can apply to that school. Yes, it is good to um, send emails to potential supervisors in different schools and see if they would ask you to apply to their school because that kind of increases your chances of getting in because now they'll be able to speak for you and say, I want the student to come to the school. But sometimes you send these professors emails and you don't get a response from them. So does that mean you should not apply to that school? No. Please go ahead and apply. I will give you myself as an example. When I was applying for my PhD, I sent emails to the professors that I wanted to go to their school and none of them replied, like none of them replied. So did that stop me from applying? No, I still went ahead and applied to my schools and I still got scholarship and funding and admission and I'm here today. So please, if you know you really want to go to that school and actually you want to do a PhD and they have the kind of research that you want to do, you know you're going to fit into their program, but they so the advisors, the professors, they are not responding to your emails or what, go ahead and apply. You will still be able to get in. So another important question that I always get from people is that some people think that for you to be able to get scholarship in the U.S., that there is a link that you go to, you apply for admission. Then when you get admission, you will not apply for scholarship. That works for some schools or for some scholarship bodies in the U.K. But here in the U.S., there is no separate link for admission or for scholarship. All you have to do is go to the website of the school you want to apply to check the program you want to apply to and see if they give if they would there that they give scholarship to their students for instance if you want to do chemistry in university of kentucky go to the website of university of kentucky check chemistry program check admission section and you will see if they give scholarship or not if they don't they will tell you if they do they will tell you make sure you check these things before you apply there is no separate link although some schools some schools actually for phd some schools after they give you the admission they'll want you to get funded by applying for financial aid yes that also works but most of the times you don't need to some schools maybe you get admission automatically you're getting funded that's how it worked in my school when i went to the website of my current school what i saw is that all phd students are fully funded so once you get admission to study your phd in the school automatically you get funding so i saw that and i went ahead and applied so just go to the website of the school check and you will see but if they want you to do additional thing for you to be able to apply for funding they also state it on the website so it's not like you need to apply get admission first before you start applying for funding just check the website of the school you would know the right thing to do the last thing I wanted to talk about is that some people think that if you don't apply immediately, application opens, that you will not get scholarship, you will not get funding. Yes, it is very good for you to apply early, so that to give them enough time to look at um, your application package. Although some schools will tell you an early application will get funded, but if the school did not say that for you to get funded, you must have applied early, still go ahead and apply anytime. For instance, in this my school, I had a lot of challenges when I was applying. The undergraduate school delayed for me to get my transcript they were on strike or something like that i had i could i had delays in writing my grb i just had a lot of delays so i ended up applying on the deadline on let's say the deadline was on the 10th i sent in my application on the 10th i still got admission and funding so don't allow okay because of um it's close to the deadline i'm not going to apply because i'll not get funding please go ahead and apply do not limit your chances apply to as many schools that you can apply trust me you will get admission just make sure you do the right things now to know the right things to do i'm going to be posting the video soon on how to apply to undergraduate degree and also separately how to apply to graduate degree and get scholarship and funding so make sure to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed and also turn on the notification bell so that once i post the video you will um get notified you can also follow me on social media my social media handles under here follow me so that once i post i usually share it on my social media to tell people that i've posted you be notified that i've posted if there are other questions that you have on how to apply that you need clarification on please post them in the comment section and i will make another video addressing them if it need be or i will just reply in the comment section and also if you really like this video don't forget to like and also share this video and also there is a super thanks button uh, function where you can show your appreciation for this video please i hope to see you guys showing this video some love thank you
I'll see you guys in my next video.